Hello, my name is Chris Mikata Pralat and I've been working with older adults for over 10 years in the voluntary sector. And um, at the moment I work for a small charity called Fulham Good Neighbours. But I've been always fascinated at um, how Japanese have been dealing with their aging population. And today I would like to talk a little bit about Japanese lessons for the UK in social care and in how perhaps we could make our own social care better. Um, so first of all, um, Japanese introduced something that's called a long-term care insurance scheme back in the year 2000. They realized that their population is aging quite dramatically, the numbers are going up quite drastically, and they had to do something, and they had to do something fast. So they basically um, introduced a mandatory scheme for anyone over the age of 40, which means that as a taxpayer in Japan, uh, apart from national insurance contribution that I pay towards my health costs and towards my state pension, I also pay a separate contribution towards the costs of my social care. Now, this also means that um, when, as and when I will need it, I will know that the social care is available to me. I will still need to contribute a 10% cost to it once I'm assessed eligible for it. But equally, I don't have to worry about a postcode lottery, or I don't have to worry about the fact that I might not be able to pass any of my inheritance to my children or grandchildren. Now, we've been struggling with social care and rising costs of social care, and also how the system is inadequate for the needs of our older people for quite some time. And my suggestion is that perhaps we could look at that solution as one of our options. The other area that I would like to mention is integrated care. Again, it's something that the UK has not been um, as good in as, as it would like to. So we have a separate health and social care system, whereas the Japanese um, have them all combined. So how it works in my case, uh, when I've been assessed as requiring social care, I would then, or my family member would then, start looking for a care manager for me, perhaps through a local voluntary sector organization, a private provider. And I or my family member would meet with their care manager um, to arrange the care I need in line with the assessment that I had. Now, I, we would find that care manager in a comprehensive community support center. And within that center, we would also find other professionals, occupational therapists, social workers, nurses, and um, all those people dealing with my care and with meeting my needs. And that means that I don't have to spend time looking for them, chasing different institutions and individuals, because they're all under one roof. Equally, those individuals don't have to chase each other, because they're all based in the same building. So they actually meet each other on a daily basis, and that also means that ultimately the quality of care I receive is much better by the virtue of it being literally integrated. An element of integrated care are also joint intergenerational facilities. An example of that would be, for instance, in a small locality, we might have 10, 15 older people in their 80s, 90s being assessed as requiring um, daycare facilities, and they would be visiting their local daycare center together with nursery aged children, maybe another 10, 15 of those youngsters, who would be based again under the same roof. Some of the activities they would be doing would be separate, but some of them would be together. So perhaps they might share meal times, perhaps they might share um, a drawing activity together. And all in all, it just contributes to creating a more cohesive society, I guess, but also more integrated care for, for everyone in that society. So as we know, um, not just in the UK, across the world, the number of households um, where three generations live under one roof is, is coming down. And this is a fantastic opportunity for young children to actually meet some, um, some proper grown-ups and for those seniors to, to spend some quality time with young kids. It, it just benefits both groups and it's quite, quite an obvious, obvious achievement and it's something that I hope we could one day incorporate in the UK. Finally, the last point I would like to make is about the use of robotics. Now, Japan is famous for, uh, for, is famous for its robots and automation, but in fact, the use of robotics in, 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 daily, in daily care is not as wi widespread as we might, expe as we might expect. Um, but one of the, uh, one of the wonderful de developments in that field is a robot called Paro. 
It's a robotic seal developed over 20 years ago, and it basically replaces animals where animal therapy is no, uh, is no po it's not possible, perhaps because of health and safety reasons, or risk assessments, or lack of suitable animals. Now, Paro is deliberately created as a seal, uh, rather than a dog or a cat, because people might have preconceptions about those animals and might not want to engage so eagerly with them. So it's a seal, and it's a seal that responds to touch. It moves slightly, it also makes noises, and the idea of, of, of those actions by the robot is actually to try to entice people to nurture it, try to entice those nurturing characteristics in us. It also works, and that's maybe perhaps why it also works so well, uh, with people with autism, 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 but also people with advanced dementia. Um, it's just a great way um, for people to be able to engage with a power robot when they're not so confident in engaging with uh, fellow human beings. Equally, it, it just acts as a stimulator for a discussion around the table. If there's a group of two, three older people who might not be so willing to talk to one another for some reason, why well, suddenly they have a discussion point. Maybe it's going to bring back their memories, their childhood, when they had a pet, or maybe it's, it's going to bring something else. It will never replace a staff member, and its role is not to replace a staff member. Its role is to add something else that wasn't there before and to create a higher value. So I hope that um, by presenting those different examples of how Japanese have been dealing with their aging population, um, I have been able to stimulate some interest in the field. And I sincerely hope that more people will take interest in how Japanese deal with aging and hopefully learn from them. Thank you.